Hello, this is Roberto and this is the h is in my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the pressure enthalpy and this is part 3 of the uh, series, alright? So now let's start with the um, with an example, okay? So say that we have a pressure in here. So since we have the gauges in here, the high side and low side, we're going to say that the high side pressure is equal to the following. The high side pressure reading is going to be uh, 200 PSIG. When, when, so when we're saying PSIG, we hit the say uh, gauge pressure, and the low side is going to be pressure too. So the pressure is going to get that we're going to get is like say a 80 PSIG. Okay, so you obtain those values by connecting these gauges to the service port valves right here outside of the condenser. Okay, by having these pressures, you already have the following. You already you're already going to have the temperature, right? But when if you want to get into the pH diagram, you need absolute pressure. Okay, so the absolute pressure, see, uh, we're going to put in here pressure, absolute, it's going to be equal to the following, 200 PSIG plus 14.7 PSIG, because uh, atmospheric pressure. And this is going to give me 214.7 PSIA. So PSIA is going to be absolute pressure. And why is it 14.7? Because that, that's the atmospheric pressure. Okay. What is the other one? Pressure absolute. And the first is the high side. The other one is the low side. It's going to be 80 plus 14.7. And that's going to be equal to 94.7. And that's going to be PSIA because PSIA is absolute pressure, all right? So those are the readings that we're getting from here. And now we're gonna make a plot in here. So let's say that we're gonna make that in blue so that way we are able to see. So 214.7, so this is 300, that's 200, uh, that's 300, that's 250, say around this area, okay? So we're gonna make this right here. There we go. That's the high side, and the other side is going to be the 94. So 94 is going to be right here, uh, below 100, right? So that's going to be below 900. Below 900. Okay, so that's going to be the high side, and that's going, the other one is the, going to be the low side. And now, from here, say that we have the following. Okay? Okay, let's put it in pink. So, in order to make the graph in the pressure enthalpy diagram, the only need with the, the only thing we need, the only values we need are the pressures. The pressures in the high side and the low side. So by having the pressures on the high side and low side, we're going to be able to know what are the limits, high and low side. Then in here we can always say that this is the saturated liquid side and we have so a certain degree of subcooling. Usually it's like 10 degrees or something. So just for explanation purposes, we're going to put it right here and it's going to go down right there. And then we're going to have an amount of superheat and then we're gonna follow this line right here, compressor, and then the cycle is gonna go again. So now we're gonna put here like this, like that line, and then right here the same line. There we go. So that is actually the refrigeration cycle. See, one, two, three, four, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to put in here is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.4. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And now, here is what we're going to do now. We need to understand what is each state. Okay, so 1 to 2 is going to be actually 1, one to 2. Okay, is going to be constant enthalpy. Constant enthalpy why is it constant enthalpy because the enthalpy is not going to change this is the line of enthalpy see enthalpy the same line 
it's going to be constant enthalpy. And why this is very interesting and important? Because at a constant enthalpy, we have this device. Uh, we're going to put that in red so that way it's more visible. So this is going to be the TXB. TXB or metering device, all right? And also in here, we're going to have the evaporator. Evaporator. This is going to be the condenser. Condenser. And this is going to be the compressor. Compressor. And we have those components on this side, see? Condenser, compressor, TXB, and the coil, all right? So the TXB could be the metering device, EEB, could be TEB, EEB, V, and piston, capillary tube, so. Okay, constant enthalpy. So that's gonna be completely applied to the TXB, TXB. They also call it isentalpic, okay? So now we're gonna go from two to three. So what is that process? From two to three, the process is going to be constant, constant pressure, constant pressure. And it's gonna be a saturated pressure. So that's going to be located for the coil or the evaporator, evaporator, or the coil. All right, the next step is going to be the three to four, and then from three to four, we're going to have constant entropy, constant entropy. And the constant entropy is going to be applied to the compressor, compressor, and finally, see, three to four, and finally we're going to have from four to one, and then we're going to put four to one, that's going to be another constant constant pressure pressure and that's going to be applied for the condenser condenser okay so in this stage the uh, usually one to two whenever they call it constant that's also a synonym for iso iso equals constant for example, from one to two, it says constant enthalpy. So usually that process is called ISO or ISEN, enthalpic process. ISO or ISEN. The other one is going to be constant pressure. That's going to be ISO, but it's it's not going to be called ISEN, baric. It's usually called isobaric. Isobaric process. Isobaric process. Constant pressure. And the other one is going to be constant entropy, I so or isentropic. Isentropic or isotropic. There we go. All right, iso. Let's put in here isent two. So isentropic, isentropic is related to the enthalpy, isobaric to the pressure, isentropic to the entropy. Entropy they call it S. And then isenthermic, no, it's usually most commonly known as isothermal. Isothermal process is going to be related to the temperature, all right? So those are the four processes that we have, 4.1 and 4.2, okay? I mean, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and one to, uh, 4 to 1, okay? And this is the all the ISO, ISO and ISEN. Okay, so now why this is the main purpose of this pH diagram? Because we, uh, we want to understand what each component does. So besides the diagram, so when we're describing this condenser, for example, sometimes it's very confusing to know what is going on inside with the refrigerant is the refrigerant in liquid form is the refrigerant in vapor form is it at high pressure low pressure so when you know this ph diagram that gives you a more educated language to describe the process of the refrigerant in a, in this ac system for example let's take into account the condenser when you're talking about the condenser, you only have to remember the pH diagram and you're going to say, what is the condenser doing? What the condenser is doing, you just have to read this. See, well, let's focus on the condenser. What's going on with the refrigerant in the condenser? The condenser is going to have the refrigerant in 
a superheated state in number four. Once it, once it's, it is in superheated state, the main function and mission of the condenser is going to be to reduce and transform that refrigerant. So how, do, how does that do, it does that? So it's rejecting heat. So right here, rejects heat. Rejects heat. Okay. Rejects heat. But what is he going to be doing? He's going to be having the refrigerant in a superheated state. Number one mission, the condenser is going to, going to de de superheat that refrigerant until it becomes saturated. Why am I saying saturated? Because it's going to start being a mixture. On this side, it's not a mixture. Once it gets into the uh, curve, it's going to be a mixture of what? Vapor and liquid. So functions of the condenser, it's going to de superheat then it's going to be in it's going to be in a saturated state and then it's going to subcool so it has important to put in here too we're going to put it in 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 blue that part is going to be subcooling that's going to be the subcooling and this part is going to be the superheat because you want to make sure that you don't have any liquid in the entering the compressor super heat Okay, so now what's the condenser going to be doing? This superheating, it's going to lower the temperature and after it lowers the temperature, changing the state from vapor to liquid, once it's in liquid, you're going to make sure that you have liquid liquid, That's then it's going to subcool. Three functions, this superheat, lower the temperature and subcool. Okay, that's going to be for the condenser. Now we're going to go after the condenser to the TXB right here, the TXB main function is to decrease the pressure see as you can see here the absolute pressure is going to be 200 and uh, 14 it's going to decrease the pressure or drop the pressure to the low side at a constant enthalpy a, a, a isentalpic process constant enthalpy is not going to change any heat content okay that's what the TXP does in other words Let's see what, what is the TXB doing. In the TXB, you have completely liquid. The refrigerant is in a liquid state. And since it's in a liquid state, it's going to go and change once it's coming out from the, from the TXB. Let's put that very quickly. So see, in this point, it's going to be a mix, a mix of vapor and liquid. So in this part, it's going to come like, um, say, for example, 25% of vapor and 75% of liquid, just for the sake, see, because it's in right there. Now, after that, we're going to have the evaporator. So the evaporator is going to be working at a constant pressure and constant temperature. And the main function of the evaporator is going to be the, to evaporate that liquid. So it's going to... It's going to increase the temperature, no, increase, actually change the state. It's going to boil the refrigerant. And then you're going to make sure that before you enter to the compressor, you have completely only vapor. That's why we make sure about the superheat. And when, when your system has a TXB, that makes sure that you have completely vapor entering the compressor. And so once it is, what's once it's inside the compressor, before entering the compressor, you have completely vapor. You're going to have an isentropic process. All right. Okay. So now another important point is that we're just going to put some formulas in here because actually the main application of this uh, pH diagram is for the formulas. All right. So that way we're able to understand this better. So uh, we're going to put in here the net the refrigerant effect the refrigerant the free the rent effect or refrigeration effect the refrigeration effect okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this all right okay so we're gonna put refrigeration effect refri duration effect it's actually going to be this point. Um, what we're going to do this is going to be with blue still. 
from here see until here point two so we're gonna come here so we're gonna have those enthalpies okay so this refrigeration effect is gonna be the following Q uh, let's put this in here Q equals the mass rate times mass flow rate times the enthalpies enthalpy on three and enthalpy in two enthalpy three minus enthalpy in two that's going to be the refrigeration effect and that's going to give you in BTUs per hour and you know that one ton equals 12,000 BTUs per hour therefore you're going to have the total capacity of the system so if you convert this to ton that's going to be the total heat total heat capacity total heat okay so that's the refrigeration effect there we go you have H2 and H3 now what is the work that the compressor is doing because when when you're talking about work of the compressor you're talking about bills because how much energy is the compressor consuming so now we're gonna drop this line right here see we're going down right here okay and that's gonna be the work of the compressor so the work of the compressor is gonna be the following work equals again the mass flow rate times that's going to be h4 and h3 h4 minus h3 and that's going to be the compressor work compressor work and you have you have these tables available in the internet you go you can go and find the r14a and if you have a four uh, R134A then you can still have those tables and find out your enthalpy so pretty much the main reason of these diagrams and these videos are to for technicians to have a better vocabulary and better way to explain how the process is so imagine you go to your customer and then of course they don't want to know the specifics but it sounds more educated that to let them know hey your com condenser is not working and then you know the ins and outs of what's going on with the condenser oh by the way the condenser is de superheating lowering the temperature and also we're gonna make sure that the charge is correct so that's why it's also sub cooling so that way we don't have any bubble getting into the txb and after an isentalp isentalpic process we're gonna get into the evaporator so it's going to absorb the heat from your home and then after that we gotta make sure that there's enough superheat which the TXB makes sure of that and then goes into the compressor and then rejects the heat to the atmosphere again that's another cycle so it's it's just to understand better what what's going on in there in the refrigeration cycle and to have a better language and to just know a little bit more of the equations okay so lastly we're gonna uh, talk about the coefficient of performance right here COP is going to be equal to the refrigeration effect see evap let's put it in evaporation Q evaporation is like this total that's going to be for cooling Q evap so Q evap divided by the work that put, were put in there work of the compressor what is COP that is called coefficient of performance coefficient of of performance per four mans all right okay so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it uh, don't forget the, to hit the like button and subscribe all right thank you very much thanks